All right, guys, you remember I asked you if you want to see wiring diagrams, right? Now, do you guys really want to cover all of this stuff here? Woo! I don't know how long this video is going to go, but okay, let's see where it takes us. Okay, the first thing I think we ought to talk about is what did we have as a fate? We saw uh, vert wires. Okay, we saw, I told you that the ignition switch was bad, and I'll go over that, and, but you know the first thing, let's cover the first things first. Uh, guess what we ought to look at is what our evidence says. What, was, what did we actually see? Okay, the wife said we saw smoke. All right. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it, you didn't see it, but I'll say it was there. We had burn insulation on a couple of the wires. And we had corrosion. Now let's, uh, let's, let's go over which one maybe happened first. Smoke. You think that happened first? Mm-mm. Well, maybe if I was doing a magic trick and then I went like this and I went, and then some smoke popped up, maybe so. I don't think so. Okay, burnt insulation. You think that was the first thing that happened? Mm-mm. I don't think so. Maybe too much current? Well, if we had too much current, let's say when this car being, say, 13, 14 years old, depending on when it was built, and if we had a problem there, say a design problem, even though this insulation was very thin, as I mentioned, let me go ahead and just show you that. Okay, here's the insulation. Okay. Now, this is actually where two wires will go inside. You can see one side is the red with your gray tracer, and then on the other side, you can see it was going to be the red wire. And it's separated by this tiny, tiny little perforation of plastic that's right in between. But overall, the whole plastic is real thin. While we're in it, let's in it. Let's be scientific about it. All right. Let me get my glasses down so I can see. All right, let me get a, make sure I'm getting right on a flat spot here. Okay, looks like about 15 thousandths, okay? Now let's check one of the wires here, yeah, a normal wire by itself. Let's see what we got on that one. Okay. Okay. Looks like 20 thousandths. Yeah. Five thousandths difference. Not as much as I thought it was going to be. All right. So if we had a problem in the design issue where the normal amount of current coming down this wire, we would have had a problem a long time ago because this wire would have burned up if there was an issue. Even if these two wires are being together like they are. All right. So now that brings us to the third thing here, which is corrosion, right? Now corrosion, right there, as you remember, was on one of our terminals. And just as a reminder, let's take a look at it, okay? And let me get you some light here so you can see it. All right, now this, this tab right here is terminal 30. Okay, if you can look really close down there, you can see some of the green, green coating on it. All right, if we go to the other side, we can probably see some more. Okay, see this got some green coating on that one. Now, if you look at the others, they pretty much look okay. Right, you do see a little bit of discoloration, like a little bit of dark gray. That's a sign of uh, corrosion starting. All right, you notice the terminals are not quite as bright as they should be. Okay, so now the question is, well, what causes this corrosion? Okay, let me see if I can put this in a little bit of a nutshell here. <clears throat> you can't go out and go to, let's say, I'm going to dig up some copper. Okay? The copper exists in a, as an oil, so it's going to be in its natural state. It would be copper sulfate. So they get it, they mine it, and they take it, and they process it. And they put it into a, with the process that they do, it goes up to a higher energy level, right? 
So it's not a stable uh, uh, material at this point. So basically, it wants to get back to where it was, which was in its natural state, back as an oil. So what will happen is that the copper will react with oxygen, okay, and along with moisture. Now this just could be the moisture that's in the air. All right, so where can we get that from? Now see, this is all speculating, you know, but hot, humid days, okay, you come in, you get your air conditioner going. Now, we got a little bit of places here on these tabs where we can get some condensation going. That's going to react with the oxygen. All right. Now, what do you think can make this thing speed up? Temperature. The higher the temperature goes up, then the more you're going to get this oxidation or this corrosion, let's say, that's going to happen. That's going to speed up the process. Now, as you notice on that terminal 30, that's a B-plus terminal. That's where we're going to have some current coming down here, down through this uh, down through that wire. So that means this whole uh, corrosion process is going to be you know, sped up because of, first we got the oxygen in the air, and it's copper. Once we get back to its natural state, which is copper sulfate, and we have the temperature, which is going to be the current, which is going to go down there. So we got all this stuff going against us. Now, when this here corrosion starts, now we're going to create a resistance. Now, the resistance, as the current is going through that, is going to create a voltage drop across that resistance. Now, if you got a voltage drop across anything, you're going to dissipate heat. Right? Power, which is in watts, is going to be equal to voltage times current. Or P equals I squared times R, I being current, or P equals voltage squared divided by resistance. Okay, so we got all this stuff going through, I, I think is where our problem started. So we had the oxid, the corrosion, right? And by the way, the, the, the word for that is oxidation. It's basically where copper is giving up electrons in exchange with the uh, oxygen, uh, you know, atoms or electrons. You know what? You know what we need? We need to talk to a chemical engineer who may can help us out on understanding a little bit more about this corrosion process. Hmm. So let me see if I can set up an interview and we'll talk to a chemical engineer about this corrosion. Maybe how can we, uh, what causes it, what slow, how can we slow it down, maybe prevent it. I don't think that's going to happen, but maybe we can slow it down. So anyway, let's do that. By golly, we need to go find him right now. Find a chemical engineer. Here's Walt Billis. He's uh, one of my co-workers, and he's going to talk to us about corrosion. Like, what causes this stuff? Uh, how does it get formed? Where does it come from? What's the chemical? So, anything you want to say, Walt, just go ahead and say it. You want to say hello to all the viewers? Hello, viewers. All right. So, uh, what is corrosion? Well, corrosion is the... Uh the uh, chemical oxidation of the metal. Okay, so what does the oxidation mean? Uh, that's when the, uh, the metal combines with uh, other elements in the atmosphere. Such as? Uh, uh, such as uh, oxygen, okay. uh, carbonates, chlorides, uh, sulfides to form a, uh, a salt or a corrosion. Okay, do we need any moisture uh, yes, moisture would help to create corrosion as well as uh, elevated temperatures. Okay, so the elevated temperatures, so that will kind of like speed the process up then? Well, relatively speaking, you're talking about years for some of this stuff to occur okay. inside a car. Okay, so like for current coming down through a wire, say the more current, the more heat, then that can kind of contribute to making it oxidize faster. Perhaps, or the more you start the car. Right, okay. Well, how would that actually starting the car more. Well, you're using it more. It goes through more duty cycles. Okay. So in this case where I showed you the ignition switch and you saw the green powder coating on there, so is that, uh, what is that chemical there? Is that actually, uh, it's formed another compound here by yeah. this oxidation process? Exactly. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's corrosion. Is it green color? Does that give us some kind of indication or? Yeah, it's probably uh, carbonates or uh, sulfides. I'd like to say 
uh, copper sulfate or cop copper carbonate? Highly likely. Okay. Some combination of the two. Okay, some bad stuff when it gets in there because it creates a high resistance. Then that'll create a voltage drop and that'll create heat. Then that can dissipate on down the terminals out to the wire and then it can heat up. And, and, then, and then start melting the plastic. Yes. So you think what happened is the corrosion here was the first thing that happened and then from that we had heat that went down the wire and then we had the smoke coming off the insulation. That sounds right. All right, okay. So how can we kind of slow, we can't, we can't stop this corrosion then, right? Well, if it was a sealed connector perhaps where it was isolated from the environment. Okay, so the cavities on the back of this uh, connector was actually open. So if you're thinking putting some kind of sealant like a RTV or something like that, that could seal it or? Well, perhaps. However, there's many other connections in the car that would be subject to that as well. Right, so probably not worth, not practical. Well, if you're in there already. Yeah. Well, how about say a cleaner, some kind of deox material, try to or some kind of Probably not. silicone compound to slow Cleaning it down. that stuff out. No, I'm talking about you start brand new. You uh, know, you got a new, a relatively new connector, terminals, new switch, and now you're putting it together, so some you want to... Some dielectric grease would probably do the trick. Okay, so that would kind of slow it down considerably. And then sell the car right away. And get rid of it, exactly. Okay, anything else you want to want to say? Okay. And now you know everything Carrie knows. All right. And also Walt knows. So Walt, want to thank you for your time and appreciate uh, all your insight on corrosion. And I know the viewers, are, I'm sure they'll learn a lot about it. Thanks again. Great. Okay. All right. That was pretty good. Uh, that was pretty good information there from uh, Walt uh, Billis there helping us out. So he agrees with me that uh, the corrosion started the whole process and uh, that created some heat because of the voltage drop and that's dissipating heat and then that heat is going to go right there at that point where it's going to spread out and then it's going to start from here and it's going to work us out, weigh it out. Now once this here plastic starts to heat up then it's going to melt. Now when it melts what do you think we're going to get? <clears throat> this smoke. So in the order I think this is what happened. We had corrosion. Then that corrosion, which had heat, that burnt the insulation. And then when the insulation starts burning, then we have the smoke. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, let's, uh, you remember I mentioned about the ignition switch failed? So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. How did it fail? I may, you know, why did it fail, you know? We can go in all kinds of speculations. All you know, basically, all I can say is it failed, and we can make all kind of theories up on that. But uh, the end result is I can show you what what happened as far as in the the aftermath of it. Okay. Now here's our ignition switch. Okay, we're looking at it from the top. Okay, you see these terminals: 15, 30, 50 B. You got P, 75. We got another 30. And then, by the way, these 230s, you think they're interconnected as they show on the wiring diagram. And I'll show you that. And uh, 50 and 86S, well, let's look at that a little bit. All right, now what you're looking at is I took the old switch. I had a brand new switch. And what I did is I, I went from one to the other, the old to the new, with every possible position. That was when the switch is off, the key is in the switch. You're in the on position, we're in the start position, and I'm looking for the continuity between all of the terminals, and I'm comparing them between the old and the new, okay? Now, if you look right up here, everything that's on this side in this column, all right, <clears throat> this column running all the way down is the old, old switch, okay? And everything that's over here in the right-hand column is the new switch. So I'm comparing one function to another function, the old to the new. Now, everything that you see in green is everything is checked out okay. Everything that you see in white, there may, there's a terminal on the switch, but there's no wire connected to it, okay? So as you can see, everything is looking good between the old and the new. And in this position right now, the, key is in, uh, the switch is in the off position and the key is not in the ignition. 
so everything is good not so sure how well this will show up but hopefully you'll be able to see it now we slide down to the next section down here this is where I have the switch is in the off position but the key is in position or a key is in the in the ignition even with the key in the ignition and it's not turned to the on position you will activate some things like the radio and uh, there's some other functions there a couple of them I forget what they are at the moment hopefully on the wiring diagrams I can remember to cover that alright we slide on down we get down to here this is where the ignition switch is in the on position okay down here at the very bottom this is where the switch ignition switch is in the start position now everything that you see in orange over here okay is where <clears throat> where I had a had a, a failure it was an open there was no short from one terminal to the other it was just basically these are open so this is circuits open this is open this circuit was good this is open another good another bad okay so if you want to look at that for a second you can see uh, some of the failures that I had on, on that old ignition switch okay all right guys this would be a good place to close this video out and actually I, I videotaped the whole thing well I should say the wife videotaped it and this thing turned out to be an hour long so I was gonna try to do it in one video I'm going to divide it up and this is probably a good place to stop this video and in the next video then it's going to be nothing but wiring diagrams and we'll go over that all right so you guys take care and we'll see you in the next video